So I wanted to uh, welcome everyone, and um, thank you for being here. Um, I'm Chris Paxson. I'm the new Director of Planning and Development for the City of Conway. Um, it's my pleasure this afternoon to welcome you to the City Hall and to, to the Open House for the Oak Street Ahead Project as a part of the action strategy for, the, for a year-long implementation plan. And it's a planning process. Over the last year, staff has worked side-by-side -side with Garver and has worked through meetings, group, uh, groups and interviews, collected data such as inventory trends, mobility, and environmental policy, uh, has worked through concepts, committees, and targeted interviews. And while I didn't get a chance to work directly with this project, uh, coming in on the back end of the project, last week was my first week, um, it wasn't long ago that I was on the Planning Commission in Northwest, on a community in Northwest Arkansas uh, to conduct a similar survey for the 71B corridor. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So I definitely understand the work that goes into these processes. And for now, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, um, in the back somewhere, he's probably hiding James, uh, James Walden. He is uh, um, one of the urban planning leads for Garver, Juliet Ritchie. Uh, she's our urban planning lead for Garver. And of course, uh, Marty Schuker, principal RDG community and regional planning. And I will let you take over. This will be uh, really just a short introduction to the boards uh, around the room and uh, some information as well about the philosophy and the approach that we've taken and some of the, the findings and principles of, of the plan. Um, it's very interesting to do uh, plans for urban corridors like Oak Street uh, because it's uh, usually those are environments that every city's got, but, but most cities are not very happy with what they've got. So that was typical of Fayetteville with the 71B project and, um, and people's attitudes toward Oak Street are things that we ferreted out during, during, um, during this planning process. Our study area ran from Hark Rider, that is uh, obviously the edge of downtown uh, Conway, to Hart Lane, which is the edge of the event center. So it's that whole length of O Street outside of, um, outside of downtown um, Conway, uh, which is, by the way, a really beautiful um, district, and, and, and it's been a real joy to be working in this, um, in this city. Uh, the plan covers four um, specific areas, transportation, um, which is uppermost really in a lot of ways in people's minds, um, land use and new developments related to that, land use dealing primarily with existing things, uh, new development dealing with large sites that are opportunities and ideas about how those might develop over time, and city quality. So the aesthetic qualities of, um, of, of, of the street fall within, um, fall within that category. The first board that you'll see as you walk into the room summarizes um, that information as well as the results of a survey that we did that a couple hundred people responded to. And uh, the survey gets information on how often people visit, what their priorities are, and then it had, if any of you took it, an array of photographs uh, that we asked people to say, um, how appropriate might these be for, um, for the Oak Street Corridor? The winners dealt with um, better crosswalks on, on the street, better sidewalks along the street, more landscaping along the street. So, so the images that address those issues really got the best scores in terms of being appropriate for, for the area. And, we, and, and, and we, uh, we listen to those things. They're very helpful to us. Um, philosophically, the idea that we bring to a project like this is something that we invented actually a few years ago in our Fayetteville project that we call corridor urbanism. So there are different kinds of urbanisms that have been uh, used around the country for those of you who are planning students or, or, or planning nerds. One is called new urbanism. Um, and the idea of new urbanism is to recall some of the scale and characteristics of traditional communities. Conway has a very, very good new urbanist project, and that's the villages at Hendricks. Um, it's, it's a very good example of that kind of a project, and it's got its own sort of orthodoxies and principles about it, but basically trying to make the streets more, more civil, more, more public, um, 
not such big yards, smaller, higher density lots, and a variety of things like that. Um, there are other kinds of urbanisms and, and philosophies as well. So, so when we were we we thought we would jump in the um, in, in the uh, mix and figure out our own applied to urban corridors, because a corridor like Oak Street really has a lot of things that make a pretty good living environment: restaurants that are close by, uh, things that you can do, things that you a bowling alley, um, variety of grocery stores, various kinds of things that are that are convenient. Um, from a, even walking distance or biking distance point of view, but we don't usually think about those sort of corridors in that way. We think of them as commercial strips. So, um, so in, a, in in looking at a corridor like Oak Street, we don't necessarily suggest building houses along Oak Street, but making an environment that that um, that strengthens those characteristics and that convenience for the areas that are around it. And there are five principles of doing that. One is called reality and respect. And that's important because the idea there is to understand and appreciate the integrity of the businesses that exist along Oak Street and, and, the, the, um, and, and the need for them to do business and to make money for their owners. So there are a lot of planners who will go in and say, we don't like used car lots or we don't like auto repair shops or we don't like parking in the front yard or those kinds of things. And and say we're just going to clear this all out <clears throat> and 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 do a dream of, but that's not reality. So reality and respect is, we start with the corridor like it is. It has its own integrity and its own importance, and it's worthy of respect because it's a place where people do business and go to for services and so forth. And that that actually is 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 is, is number one. Number two is resident population. And that's increased the number of people who live, if not on, at least around the corridor because of all the conveniences that it has along it. And so that's good for business as well. The third is opportunity and orientation. Um, orientation, helping people know where they're at. Sometimes that means having some additional intersections, actually. Um, opportunity means taking advantage of vacant sites, of sites that are underused, that are that are uh, not being used for their original purpose, that have parking lots that are too big. So those are, those are the opportunistic view of, of, of a corridor like this. Transportation function and choice, making the street work for motor vehicles, non-motor vehicles, pedestrians, uh, everybody, every kind of user uh, group who's going to use the, the, the corridor. And finally, urban environment. Um, what can we do to make the corridor as an environment as pleasing and as nice as it can be for its for its users, so so those are the um, the five principles that uh, that that we try to follow, and hopefully you'll see those reflected in in the ideas that are around the room. So uh, there are four four focus areas in the plan: transportation, land use, development, and urban quality. And I'll start with transportation. So the sl the boards that you see along. Uh, up to the big double board there that's got those circles with with intersections deal with with transportation um, and there are six basic <clears throat> excuse me six basic concepts that are in the plan that you'll see again reflected in those um, in, in in those displays number one the highest priority was improving intersections uh, trying to deal with the traffic backups the number of signals um, the the um, access for pedestrians, the delays, and so forth and so on. So that was a uh, that was a major focus of of, of attention. So you will see uh, on the second board a summary, a quick summary of the elements of a traffic report that Garver did, and it's it's and it's a, a a very good report that really analyzes traffic flow and its various problems along uh, along the street. And a lot of the ideas included in the plan flow from that. The second is access management. So access management on a street, the problem with, with, uh, with a street that's five lanes with what we call a, what some people call a twiddle, two-way turn lane, other people call a suicide lane, it, 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 it deserves the second name when the driveways don't line up. So you've got people trying to occupy the same space, making left turns to um, 
op to destinations on the opposite sides of the street. That's not a good thing. So the more that those driveways line up, the less um, hazard possibilities there are. And that section of Oak from I-40 to Hark Rider has about three times the accident, the crash rates. We don't say accident, we say crash rates as, um, as, as other streets of its type, of, of, of other kind of commercial streets. So that's, that, that problem is not so severe east of I-40, but it's a big problem between Hark Rider and I-40. So, so if we can line up those driveways, sometimes by moving them a little bit and so forth, um, we can, in a lot of cases, actually add parking to individual sites. And so, as I'll mention in a minute, we, we look at individual lots, individual businesses, and say, you know, if we, if we move this parking lot, this driveway over 10 feet or so, um, it actually might help. You might be able to pick up some parking stalls, it can, it can pick up some efficiency, and, um, and, and uh, wind up producing a safer environment. The third one is kind of an important one too, uh, and that's called parallel service streets. So um, if we can get people who are slowing down on Oak Street, looking at a destination and trying to find a driveway to it, and the truck traffic on Highway 64 that's rolling through, and separate those streams out to, to, to some degree, that is, have ways that you can get from one business to another without being on Oak Street's main line, that can help. And, uh, and, and that, that can be a very helpful solution as well that, that you, you don't necessarily think about. So if, we, if you look at the, um, at the driveways between Elsinger, where Coles and, and Conway Commons, all the, all the way almost to I-40 on the south side, there's a line of driveways that actually lines up and can be a street or can be viewed as a street. And people who know what they're doing actually use it that way. So... So far better if you're going to Coles from, as I sometimes do, from a hotel like Home Two Suites, and you use that rather than Oak Street. That's a good thing, and and that's one car uh, looking for one local car moving at slower speeds. It's, it gets stripped out of that that uh, route. Traffic signal deployment. Um, so so that's looking at traffic signal needs over a period of time and, and in relationship to the overall system. And, and traffic signals are a significant, they're, they're a help from an access point of view, but they can be a pain in the neck from a delay point of view. So there are a couple of situations, a very important one being putting the signal that's now at Faulkner Plaza over to First Avenue that has better connections to the traffic system and then building a circulation system that actually makes that work better for Faulkner Plaza is an example of that kind of a uh, of, uh, of an idea. Um, related to that is taking Merriman Street and cutting that through the driveways of Faulkner Plaza, and that becomes the primary way of getting into in, into Faulkner Plaza. So if you're coming coming from the uh, west, you turn left at the traffic signal just as you would now, and if you're coming from the east you turn up at 3rd Avenue, which is, which is pr pretty much what you would do anyway. Um, active transportation means building continuous sidewalks and, and also uh, contingency bicycle accommodations. They're not always along the street, but, but have a way of, of, of doing that. Conway is a very bike-friendly city, and, um, and, and so that speaks to that. And neighborhood connectivity which is connecting neighborhoods better to the corridor, uh, to, to, the, to the corridor itself. The big culprit, by the way, is Amity and Elsinger, that, that situation. Um, not surprising. So there are three different options to um, address that. Um, the one that's the most creative probably is, is, is lining up Bob Courtway with Elsinger instead of Amity. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then not which makes a signal at Amity not necessary and eliminates this, the stacking problem that really jams traffic up. Um, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a little bit of an interesting off-the-box solution, but it's actually got some very beneficial um, effects. The second focus is land use. 
So that's how, how property is used. Number one, we've already talked about respecting existing businesses. And, um, and that, this gets down to the level of, um, if we're suggesting green space, how can we, if we create a problem, how can we solve that problem for, for the benefit of the business? Um, more housing. So again, um, you'll see in the, in the diagrams that a major uh, initiative from a housing, from a, a development perspective is more residential. Um, and again, not necessarily on the street, but filling in some of the big gaps. A great example of that is the big former trailer park uh, between that connects. It's actually it's the one on north of 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 the strip between East German and um, um, and I and um, Little Creek. That that's a it's also Brookside. Yeah, Brookside is but it, Little Creek on the other end of the but Brookside is the yeah, is the uh, western entrance in. Um, Evolution and uses. So things that are that are uh, used for something now might change over time. So plants got to be flexible enough to accommodate change. And Juliet will talk a little bit about those things because they deal with zoning and regulation. Um, buffering, uh, that there's cases where there are inevitably going to be incompatible land uses in these corridors. And they're salvage yard next to residential, for example. So buffering's got to be provided, but it would be great if buffers are not just trees or, or stuff that's neglected, but actually has, have functional uses in terms of connectivity, trails or paths, um, even things like neighborhood parks. And finally, a regulating plan that, uh, so that gets into zoning uh, and land development regulations that actually are able to do things that are good rather than um, so having people think about how can the zoning help me as opposed to I can't do that because of the zoning kind of a, a way of, of, of summarizing that. Um, on the development side, there are four major areas for development. And you'll see those illustrated all around the, all around the room. So we split that up to um, the in-city area that is Hark Rider to, little, to I-40 then I-40 to Little Creek. Um, Little Creek is going to have a trail along it, a regional trail. So that becomes a that becomes a way of getting from one side of Oak Street to the other um, through an underpass under under the the, the road. Um, the Amity and Elsinger section, uh, I mentioned that. Little Creek to Gold Creek, so that centers around the East German intersection. Uh, the events center which has a big piece of land in front of it that's kind of interesting to look at in terms of what that could be in the, in, in the long run. For each one of these um, areas, there's what we call an axonometric drawing, sort of a, a, a fancy name for a three-dimensional bird's eye view. Um, it doesn't tell you a whole lot more than, than a two-dimensional plan does, but it looks cooler. So, uh, so, so you can... So, so uh, there's, there's one of these for each of the four areas that shows you um, in color code what, um, what we're suggesting as possibilities for every, um, for every um, element. Um, you know, we recognize that these are all voluntary decisions, that anything that's suggested in the plan is not compulsory, but we hope it creates enough ideas and ways of people who are in business now looking at a site, thinking about how that could develop. Um, that that it sort of gets gets a process started, so you can see that um, Hark Rider I forty is mostly a little bit of infill development, and um, and trying to do everything that we can to line up intersections and make those the, those uh, those sites work better. Um, the piece from I forty to uh, Little Creek really deals with some infill. You can see those red buildings um, back along. Um, what, what would be um, Bob Courtway and the trail along the creek. Um, but, but so these, these sites get, get a little bit bigger. Between, um, between Little Creek and Gold Creek, um, this is an area that's got very big development opportunities. So, um, so, the, um, so the, the old mobile home park is, are, is basically a new neighborhood. Uh, the area behind small town, um, the small town shops, uh, which are which are to the lower right hand end, 
uh, that's now kind of pretty marginal use, could be part of a new neighborhood as well. Um, East German intersection has some interesting, uh, both commercial and multifamily res residential possibilities, as well as doing things like uh, connecting um, to Florence Madison School from the west side of East German, connecting that street. So you see that on the lower right as well. Um, and then finally, looking at what might be happening if we thought about the event center as being a regional destination that starts to attract its own businesses and hotels and so forth, businesses, hotels, um, uh, as well as some residential development and some uh, uses that we call flex uses, that is kind of office industrial types of buildings. And each um, each of these then is paired here, and you'll see that both in the plan and and around the uh, the room with um, these more detailed plans that they have a whole series of notes that are annotated so that they tell you what we're thinking about, uh, what the ideas are for each one of those. We found that to be a lot better way of communicating than having a lot of words. This is, just shows the current zoning along the corridor. The red is C3, which is the highest intensity commercial use. Um, in the city. Um, so that's what a majority of the, the um, corridor is zoned. There's a couple PUDs or planned unit developments um, along there and I think one area that's zoned office. But predominantly you have the high intensity um, commercial at this time. Um, you also have an existing overlay district um, that, that is along Oak Street from Hark Rider to Ingram an extension of the downtown design overlay district um, and and that has uh, that that serves to give things that have redeveloped um, a little bit of a different character so you have the CVS the Med Express I'm trying to remember there's a couple other medical offices yep they, well yep come and go uh, and so where you have them coming toward the street right it's a kind of echoing what you have downtown um, and so orienting toward the street and then a, a wider pedestrian area um, as well. So you have those things in place. It's, it is a pretty good, um, it seems to result in some pretty good projects um, of the redevelopment that we've seen in that area. And um, when we spoke with people um, up and down the corridor, that was also something that they echoed, that they did like kind of the way that that was redeveloping um, and had some concern about you know, what would happen beyond um, Elsinger in that corridor. Um, so similar to kind of what Marty said, I think that the corridor, when you're looking at redevelopment, you have this area down there on the end that's already covered by that overlay district. So beginning at Ingram and going to I-40, kind of what I'm calling District 1, um, and that would encompass that area. If you notice, I think that there are some areas that are taken in that are um, kind of beyond that first block deep um, when you get into the Kroger area and then up there along the interstate. Um, just because I think that those are areas that are going to have, have potential to redevelop. There's potential to have infill type development in kind of the larger parking lot areas. Um, and the changing face of retail, and this is something we'll talk about at um, Elsinger and Amity too, um, you know, it's kind of a trend across the United States where you see different types of infill happening just because there's not quite as much parking needed now because people do more of their retail um, online. <clears throat> That's not to say that you don't need parking, but you don't need quite as much. So it, uh, making sure that we have a regulating plan that frees up the ability for people to utilize that space if it's not being used um, for parking and um, be able to get more use out of the land and provide different um, amenities. Um, and then we have Oak Street District 2, so that area is covers Oak Street, I mean, sorry, Amity and Elsinger area, um, as well as the area along the corridor, and as Marty alluded to, along Little Creek. Um, I do think with the new um, pedestrian infrastructure that y'all are going to have going in there with the trail, I think that there's some real potential to see trail-oriented um, development happen in that area. Um, that's something that we've seen a lot in other parts of the state, in the United States. Um, as you have these trails, they become their own economic generator. People want to have um, 
you know, something that used to just be the back of stores or the back of a shopping center um, now, you know, may function as uh, having outdoor eating spaces and things. We see a lot of that in Fayetteville, like things that used to be just standard strip center. They now have, um, you know, tenants in some of those areas that are actually building out patio infrastructure on the back because the back is what faces um, the trail. So it's really interesting. And we want to make sure that anything that you put in place allows for those things to happen, um, of course, in an orderly way. Um, but make sure that we're ready for those market changes if they do come. Um, and then you have the District 3, which is um, Little Creek to the event center. This area has the most potential um, for new development. It has the least, um, I guess, established development um, of any other part of the corridor. Uh, so I think looking at it a little bit differently and it's in its own district makes sense. Um, I do think that the area right around the East German, uh, East German um, intersection and then the event center itself, those could be um, special sub-districts where you might even have a little bit different regulations that address those areas as they develop out. This just gives you a, a blow up of those areas. Um, I will say, so in the plan itself, we won't get into all of it tonight, um, but if you have a chance to look at the plan document, um, and I think there'll be a one online soon, um, we also go into all the things that, you know, Marty was talking about in regard to buffering between uses. I think transition areas between commercial and residential development, how those are handled, make a big difference in their success. Um, and so we talk about kind of the details of that and um, other things that can be implemented from the plan um, if the city does look want to look at pursuing, you know, different zoning districts um, that specifically address those areas. So there's a lot of detail there that we won't go into right now. There's, there's one other weird thing that I'll add to, and that's Simon Road. That um, si Simon Road, um, you know, rather than saying, um, that auto salvage is something that we rather not see, so we're not going to deal with it. It's it it's a pretty significant use. So so we're thinking about the area around Simon Road as as really kind of celebrating that, making it a big deal, and making it a, a destination because it is a destination. So by by ordering that, um, putting sort of a gateway on it, you know, really kind of making a big deal about it. Um, that, that is, is, is a place where ultimately, uh, with a little bit more efficient arrangement, one, the big one is very efficient, it's very well designed, but with a little bit more sort of efficiency, uh, some of the, the very small ones that are, um, locate, that, that are salvage or repair shops or so forth could locate or eventually consolidate in that area. And that becomes kind of a special district that, that, that. Um, almost like a shopping center in a sense. So, so it, it's you know it's a way of 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 um, as uses change and maybe some of the housing that gets developed and probably does make a lot of sense from market perspective starts to change the commercial market. People have a place to to go. Um, the final group is city quality, and that's that really gets into the quality of the corridor itself. So over on the, these two boards, you'll see uh, street sections. And what we're trying to do is that wherever it's possible to get a six foot separation from curb to the front of a sidewalk that's landscaped green space or, or some sort of a, of a separation. Um, I've walked that corridor from end to end at least a dozen times during, during this, um, uh, this process. And uh, when a truck comes rolling by you and you're on a, si a narrow sidewalk along the back of the curb, um, it, it's a little disconcerting. Fortunately, the drivers are pretty good and nobody's killed me yet. But so there's and there's um, uh, also pictures of what that will what that could look like. This is a possibility of um, what we might be looking at between Hark Rider and I-40 in certain areas. We can't do it everywhere. But uh, we don't have to let the perfect be the enemy of the good either. And uh, there, there are opportunities to do that. 
This is looking uh, at uh, the area around looking west from, or east rather, from Starbucks uh, toward Elsinger and, and, and the creek. So you can see how those sections work. And there's their drainage, there's some landforms and so forth there that need to be, that would need to be uh, dealt with. But it provides a, a much better look to the, to the street. Uh, so, okay, we could, yeah. Um, so the, the idea of a better streetscape, places where there might be public art and lighting incorporated, uh, trying to f find a, a way of making the um, utility lines either look better with better uh, vertical like poles and so forth, or relocate it to uh, back corridors. Burial is very expensive to do, but but relocation is something that's a little bit more a um, little bit more feasible. And then finally, looking at the possibility of taking um, the Hark Rider to I forty section of um, of of the core of Oak Street off the uh, U S highway system and routing that around uh, on, on I-40, um, that can be beneficial because it allows more flexibility on, um, on that more urban part of the, of, of, of the street. So for example, under current controls through RDOT, you can't plant trees along the street. Um, so by taking that, as a, trees, are, trees are a good thing for a number of reasons, not the least of which they slow traffic down a little bit. Um, but um, and and the the bigger kind of vistas actually speed traffic up, so that kind of flexibility, at least on the urban section, where there's a, a an easy way around just simply by using I forty, uh, would give the city more flexibility to to um, change the look of, of of the corridor a little bit. Um, finally, implementation. So uh, we talked about uh, the regulating plan. Uh, public investments really should be focused on things that will generate private reinvestment. So where um, where we can make a piece of a street work better or increase a business opportunity or create an opportunity for development, those are examples of strategic investments that are functional or can open an area up to development that, that doesn't have access right now. And you'll see a whole series of these projects that are identified in the handout uh, that, uh, that, that have priorities that are set for them, too. And again, this is all advisory. It's, it's like uh, recommendations to the city. Nobody thinks that all of this will get done. Uh, they're, they're always, they're, in any plan, they're great ideas, we, we hope, we like to think. They're ideas that are pretty good. They're ideas that we're not sure about um, in this plan as well, but um, but um, but the ones that are good hopefully stick and and uh, and and get implemented. Um, and then so uh, I mentioned the idea that private actions are voluntary, and finally we should and this is not an unimportant thing. Uh, commercial corridor like Old Street should think of itself as a district, as a commercial or a mixed use district rather than as rugged individualists and business by the individually. So a great example of district thinking is downtown Conway, where, uh, where, where there's a real esprit de corps about the, the corridor. We would like to suggest the same sort of approach on, on, on Oak Street and thinking about how different problems can be solved for the common good and how everybody's fate is sort of related to everybody else's fate. Ah, so with that, yeah. So the implementation plans. Um, so as you walk, as you walk through, you're going to see the thoughts and ideas, um, and you know some details on proposed intersections and all this. And um, the last three boards are implementation plan, and there is um, a stack of handouts that go with them that will give you a lot of details um, about each of the ideas to move things forward. We do have them color coded. So the red is a public improvement. So be a public initiated improvement. Um, the blue is a private initiated improvement. Again, as Marty said, these are all voluntary. Um, but I do think it's, it's, it's interesting to look at them on a map and understand, you know, to really realize, you know, I think um, 
the true potential of the corridor, then it would have to be a series of, you know, private and public actions. Um, and then we also have a purple, which is some that could only happen um, with both private and um, public interaction. Um, and again, I do want to stress it's voluntary. Um, nobody's trying to push me to do it, but to, but to try to get people to understand the synergy that it takes to move forward with this. And it's very detailed and I think really interesting and I think a, a very key part of the plan um, that, that helps you move in your mind from just a plan on paper to how could this actually become reality um, in specific areas of the corridor.